Hello. I pray that today's message will encourage and inspire you to be faithful servants and stewards of the Lord. I want to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the first two verses. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. You know, what comes to your mind when you think about servants and stewards? Uh, hopefully, it's an image of honor and integrity. But if not, I hope over the next few minutes, and I pray that your mind will be convinced. Otherwise, if you don't think about honor and integrity when it comes to being a servant and being a steward, I think God's Word convinces us otherwise. And so, let's dive into a few things, first of all, that Jesus had uh, said about uh, servants. First of all, we know Jesus himself was the greatest servant of all. He came to serve us in our brokenness, in our sin, in our failures, in our shortcomings, in our brokenheartedness. I mean, he served every aspect and every need in our life. And therefore, he was highly exalted. Now, what did Jesus say about servants? He said servants would be known as the greatest among us. Now, we don't really have that picture at times in our culture, but remember, we're talking about Jesus' words and Jesus' interpretation of what a servant is. It's one who is great. And, and I think that's something that inspires us. I think we know it's, it's nice to be served, but it's really a blessing to be able to serve others. I think we are comforted when others serve us, when Christ served us, but we also derive a great deal of satisfaction and fulfillment when we're serving others. There's something very healthy about being a servant, about being involved in other people's lives and helping them and lifting them up, encouraging them, providing needs for them. And so we have to remember also that one day when we arrive in heaven and we see Jesus, we long to hear these words as he greets us, well done thou good and faithful servant. Now <clears throat> let's remember who we're to serve. We're to serve the Lord and how with gladness, and then we're to serve those that we have opportunities to serve. Uh, as we have opportunity, Scripture says we should do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. Now, there are people that are marginalized. There are people that are poor. There are people that are needy, and we can help elevate their quality of life by serving and by giving unto them. So I want you to consider that. Now, the motive in which we serve also matters a lot. You know, we don't do it to be seen. Jesus said, when you do your charitable deeds or you're serving others, don't blow a trumpet. I mean, don't announce what you're doing. Do it with dignity. Do it with honor. Every man's dignity and everyone's, re, uh, uh, what's the word I'm saying here? Their reputation needs to be protected. And uh, we don't need... Uh, to, to get a lot of accolades or a lot of attention. We do it as unto the Lord. And, and remember that whatever you do unto the Lord, He will do unto us. It's just the law of reaping and sowing. And so when you do it unto the least of these, you've done it unto Christ. So remember, the motive in which we do things is not to be seen, but to serve as unto the Lord. Now let's talk about stewards just for a minute. If you think about stewards, think about the word management. We are called to be managers. That means we take care of the affairs of others. That means our time, our talent, our treasure is not anything that we can take credit for. Everything that we have is because we have received something. Therefore, I want to encourage you, when you're faithful with a little, God will entrust you with more. When you're faithful with others, God will also promote you and give you your own. And that's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about the honor and the integrity that is associated with being a servant of the Lord and being a steward of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great day.